Hey, what up guys, it's Brandon here, and welcome back to some more Super Mario Galaxy. So, in the last episode, we did the last purple coin mission, um, at Melty Molten Galaxy. So, we completed all the purple coin missions. Well, basically, we completed everything. We got all 120 power stars, because we also did, the last three stars we had to collect were over at the, um, hold on, Simon. Not even around here. Oh yeah, over here. Up there. The trial galaxies. So, um, we did that. Which, um, one of them was the e one of them was really easy, the other one was just kind of difficult, and the other one was just annoying and hard a lot. So, in this episode, we are not doing the we're, we are not going to do the finale yet. So basically, we're just going to go in, into the library and like listen to this story. So, I don't know if you guys if you guys do want to see this just if you guys don't want to see this, just you could go and skip skip along and probably just I don't know. Or you don't you don't have to watch this episode if you're not interested, but um so this is kind of like an optional mission, but anyways, without further ado, we're going to go and begin. So, look at this. There's Rosalina and Lumas. Let us begin. So yeah, the story like begins here. I think, yeah. Okay, so it has like all these stories. So we're going to start with chapter one, the Celestial Duo. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day this girl spied a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial mother began. And now we're on to chapter 2. Chapter 2, Star Bits. Days passed with no sight of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea, but... I forgot to bring water. At this, at this, Luma burst into gales of laughter and then the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh and the girl couldn't help but join in. Alright, maybe just a nibble. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits taste like honey. So that's what star bits taste like, basically. Just so you know, if, you, if no one knows what star bits taste like, that's basically what it is. But Chapter 3, The Comet. A beam of light pierced through the ship's window, thinking it was the morning sun. The girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Lumo awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get that comet! The pair descended onto the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with the flop, utterly, utterly un unable to take another step. Look! 
Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty cool, pretty good, huh? Finding star, finding star bits in, is in, is my specialty," said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's water here too. The two decide to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Chapter Four: The Dream. I think that's Rosalina there, though. One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked, her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she woke, the girl's face was damp and te with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama, wah. The pair traveled through the starry sky, skies, and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was dis despondent. Despondent. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Now, now, Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying. The girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, "I'll take care of you." With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5, Home The kitchen will go here and the library will go over there, the girl said bustily to herself. We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she'd been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth, it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture unlike any, any they had ever seen and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma, rem rem Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny clo close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6 Friends Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the, from the planet, another Luma of the same color emerged. Do you, do you know... Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seem uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer or nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot Luma parroted back. My mama, my mama! My mama, my mama! The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh, and that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama! My mama! The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Lumas just stared blank blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each other and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Chapter 7, The Telescope After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's where. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. P. 
Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dyed with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill on bright and windy days. And... I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl burst into tears and the Lumas didn't know what to do. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky because... Because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Chapter 8, The Wish Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew closer, close and tried to com comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama because she's a part of you. That means she, she's always close by. It's like me. I love Starbits because they remind me of my mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet, a soaring comet that can carry you all on this journey. With that, Luma trailing bands of white soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kablam! The ground shook and a bright light poured out of the crater that the Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet trail. Tail, I think that's, yeah. And then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could sit, could scarcely believe her eyes, but how? she kept asking. Our destiny as Lumas is to transform into different things, said, the red, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, plants, we can become all of these things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone special smile, said a green Luma. A blue, a blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All the Lumas together said, no more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in, the, in, in a whisper. She pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, Starbits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final chapter, Family. Alright, so this is the last chapter now. I think that's Rosalina, by the way. That's actually Rosalina when she was, like, younger, I believe. Because I think... Because her mother looked like Rosalina, but I don't think it was her. But anyways, with its many Lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the Lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for a new Luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said a louder voice than usual. Alright, everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sprinkled with star bits. Then it will be a star cake. The, Luma, the Lumas excitedly began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the Lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now, and I will stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I will see, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that's what makes a mother happiest. That night, when the girls lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of, a, of the blue plant she once called home. But it would be nice to return home once every 100 years to, take, to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. 
the comet carrying the Lumas and the girl continues on its journey to, to the, this very day. With more family members in tow than, than, than can be counted, it's said that, that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every hundred years, its proud white tail glaring in the sky. The end. So that's basically it there. That's all. My story is finished. So that was basically it. Wait, now we're in here now. Do you read? Wait, wait. I was just, I was just, I just wanted to see what was going to happen, but. Oh, it just shows all these. Okay, it just shows a selection of those. Well, we're definitely not going to read it again. We just spent like 15 minutes on that. But that's basically it. That was like basically the story. If you guys kind of enjoyed that, I mean. I just wanted to do that. I actually, I never even went in there in a while either. I think I only went in there like a few times, but um, not that much. I rarely go in there and like listen to the story, but that's like basically, it was like basically Rosalina and it was like the story about Lumas and stuff like that. Like Lumas could like, you know, oh crap. I can't really explain all of it, but um, you guys saw it though. Because, like, like that little girl was actually, I think it was Rosalina. I don't know. If, I don't know if it was her or not. But, um, because, well, because, like, she was the one, like, the Lumas were, like, found and, like, see, like, you see all these Lumas right now? Like, there wasn't really all these Lumas when, when that little girl found, um, that one Luma. I don't know, something like that. But, um. Yeah, and and it showed um the part where where she was building the kitchen, which because in this in the beginning of this game, all, everything here was built, so that's why it's like yeah I don't know. So I'm I'm guessing that was Rosalina. I mean you probably won't believe you probably can't really believe it anyway because because it had a different hair color in that in the storybook and everything, but um yeah I'm not sure though. <laughs> I don't really know, but, um, anyways, I'm going to end the episode here, so, like, thank you all for watching, be sure to check out my other videos, and in the next episode, the final episode, the finale, we will go and, go, we will go and save Princess Peach, we're going to go in the center of the universe, and we're going to go and beat the game, and that's pretty much going to be, well, we're already done with the game, I, I even beat the, um, yeah, I even beat the, um, final boss, earlier in this playthrough well off camera because I had to go and activate the purple coins so we could do them because there's no way I'm going to fight Bowser before I 100% this game so yeah that's, that's what's going to that's what's gonna happen in the next episode but um yeah I hope y'all enjoyed this um well kind of I don't know I mean I'm pretty sure you guys didn't really watch the whole thing or if you guys didn't if you guys got bored of watching it I don't know something like that but, um, yeah. But, anyways, be sure to subscribe if you like my videos. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button. And I will see y'all next time, guys. Thanks for watching. And, man. I was going to end the episode, but I was like, I, was, I, was, I just had more to say, kind of. Because this playthrough is already becoming, this playthrough is already coming to an end. And I began this, like, back in January. But I'll say, I'll say more of that later. But, um, yeah, and we, and we also got to talk to Rosalina, um, when we start the finale, so that's what we're going to do. But, anyways, thank you for watching.